want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, I've been waiting for this day for a long time. Ever since 2010, when culture was the only organization that invested in the census. I met Stuart Quill on November 2nd, 2009. At that time, to be candid, no vision, no idea, never thought about an API program. Why would I? I didn't even know really about the API community. I tell people, my family grew up in the Catskill Mountains, more Jewish than Chinese, perhaps. <laughs> so, when I met Stuart, I asked him what he wanted, one wish. He asked for help on the census. And I didn't understand why, and nobody had funded this community, or why this community, he told me, or the interest that I keep in the back of my head no matter what I do, no matter who I work with in this program. He said, the AAPI community is invisible. I didn't really understand what that meant. He said, this community has no voice. Didn't really understand that either. He said, this community has no seat at the table. And he said, successful, wealthy Asians come from the Asian nonprofits. Didn't understand really any of it. So I think you have to understand how happy I am today because there are many, many successful all Asians in this room to learn about the community more, to invest in this community, and to partner where possible. Because trust me, this community will not totally make it unless those of us who are successful, who are well off, can support them all along the way. This is a community that this is citizenship. They're the ones who enroll thousands, thousands, over one million people in reference to the ACA in 2012 and 13. This is a community who works on weekends to register people, to get the vote out. So we really need to support the Asian nonprofits because they are the ones that are making things happen. So if you see media saying, the Asians came out in Virginia, or the Asians came out in Las Vegas, who's doing it? The Asian nonprofits. And we need a lot of help. This community gets less than four tenths of one percent of $28 billion from Foundation Philanthropy. So why is that? Why do we get less than four tenths of one percent of $28 billion? Because the Foundation World says they don't deliver. They don't do civic engagement. Just like Sandy said, the politicians don't listen because we don't deliver and we can't make things happen. So the Culture Foundation was the only foundation that funded the census. The Culture Foundation was the only foundation that funded BCA enrollment, like what Asians don't need insurance. But I could not get any help from any foundations that invest in healthcare to help culture in reference to enrolling the ACA. So to be candid, in many places and many times, we really are sticking out there. And until and unless the very successful Asians who do have a voice, we've always had a voice, and we do have influence, and we can reach other people, whether they're electors or not electors, until the wealthy, successful, professional Asians that have absolutely made it in the corporate world. Until then, unless we help lift up this community, we're always going to be struggling. And whether that's a trade war with China, or other type of uh, racism, or so forth, we really need to help this community. So, you guys all being here today, to be candid, is a very special day for me. So, I just wanted to explain, because there are, like, this means that at least half the people are new here, so they don't know too much about the Coda Foundation, and we don't really go around advertising, because we're, we were a private company before the foundation, so our privacy sort of permeates throughout our thinking, our vision, and our mission. 
So before I begin, because nobody does it alone, so even though we didn't have a vision or strategy in reference to an aging program, we do now. And we are committed to keep the support and the investment until 2025. And for those of you who know me, we were still the sunset this year. I mean, I look young and I may act young, but I'm pretty old. <laughs> We're keeping this foundation open because if we close this year as we plan to be candid, this community will have a difficult time. So, like I said, I've got a bunch of people at headquarters getting checks out to you, by the way, okay, <laughs> for the matching requests. They're working on Vina's check today and Richard Louis' check today. So I have Susan Major, my CFO. She's the one. And you can send out $5 million of checks this week. She's the one that gets the money. I have Susie Sayers, who's my vice president of uh, Asian Progress. I have a check her out of 15 years of retirement because she was having too much fun. <laughs> and then my brother Dennis, over there. He's our director of civic engagement. Because from 2010 to basically 2015, I actually really didn't exactly know what I was doing. I was supporting a lot of national organizations, and I thought maybe that was enough. I thought a COVID came into the foundation world and invested, and we were the seed investor and the venture capital investor. I thought the other foundation was follow. They did not. So for five years, Cody spent over $50 million, and I, I had, did not have one mainstream foundation well, partner with Coulter to fund this community. So I said, I know I'm doing something wrong, major, big time, and I knew I was sunsetting, so basically we had to go in a, a urgent mode right away. So we decided that somehow nationally it didn't work, so we developed a state strategy, and in order for the state strategy to work, you know, the African-American community has been funded for civic engagement for over 50 years. Latin, Latino, and Hispanics have been funded for civic engagement maybe for the last 20, 25 years. The Asian community has never been funded for civic engagement. And I didn't have a whole lot of time because I was originally sunsetting in 2018, so now I'm sunsetting in 2025, which means still that the culture money has to work, the culture investment and the partnerships that we are creating must work. And we have to go to zero to 60 in eight years. From 2016 to 2020 to 2024, we've got three presidential cycles to work together. So culture created something which I've been told has never been done for a community of color. And maybe because we come from industry, we know we have to have an infrastructure for success. Can't build a product without manufacturing and R&D and FDA and marketing and sales and service. So Kutu created what we call the Kutu ecosystem. This was done in order to help the community succeed. So just for your information, this is a map of where Kutu is. We now have about 25 states. Uh, with two new states came on board basically this week or this month. Tennessee and Colorado. And you will meet Harry and stuff a little later. So that's where we are. Just for your information, one of the things that culture did strategically was to join several big philanthropy foundation collaborators. We knew that unless culture belonged to a foundation partnership, we still wouldn't find Asian community. So with us being on the table, if you call it, we constantly remind them who we are. And we speak up so we make sure they see who we are. So we join the four foundation Kellogg's, Brownswell, OSF, and everybody in several big uh, state infrastructure fund, the Four Freedoms Fund, which is the biggest funder of uh, immigration in the country. State infrastructure, SIF, is the biggest funder in reference to voter protection and suppression in the states. We also are uh, part of NAP, which is New Americans Campaign, which has citizenship around the country. So we have to belong to those um, collaboratives in order to make sure that the APA community would not be forgotten. So we created this culture ecosystem 
And in the center, you will see is our state and metro computers. Everything around it is to help them to succeed. This was put together, I would say, starting 2015. Uh, and we continually add to it, and we uh, grow the ecosystem. But all of these organizations are being funded by culture to support and to enhance the investment in the states. So just as an example, we have national creators. We started off with the national philosophy because we thought that was the way to go. Unfortunately, what we found was that sometimes our national partners investing in their network created some actual competition among the people on the ground. So these are the people that we fund nationally. APEN is probably the only environmental justice group in the country. And CIRAC is a brand new national partner, which focuses on Southeast Asians. And for your information, we are supporting a demographic profile dedicated to the Southeast Asians, which should be available at the end of the year, and definitely at the spring conference. NAL is New Americans in Leadership as a training group for people to become um, candidates for office. They've been a major de development of uh, candidates from the immigration community. Then we have our state conveners. And I believe Colorado and uh, Tennessee has been added, so you can see. In some country, in some states, we have actually two, like North Carolina, we have two organizations, one up north, one down south. Atlanta and Georgia, we have two, a uh, CPACs and Advancing Justice Atlanta. And in New York and Chicago, we actually added a immigration coalition organization because they've been added a lot longer than some of the Asian groups, and they have a huge Latino uh, coalition at their tables. So the metro conveners, we call them that because uh, Texas is too big for, for one convener, so we have Debbie from OCA Houston, and then we have Richard from AOA in Santa Clara, or Capica. See, <laughs> All right. And everybody knows Alex from CPA San Francisco, who's probably the leader in reference to our group in workforce development. So here's some civic engagement consultants, state voices. Believe it or not, I asked to be on the board of State Voices. Can you imagine, really? I mean, <laughs> usually I get asked, but this one, I knew how State Voices would be important. I think they are probably the most uh, organized and structured C3 group in the country, and they have over 23 State Voices tables. They just added three, Missouri, Louisiana, I'll think of them. Nebraska. Thank you, Nebraska. <laughs> okay. See, I told you I was old. Okay, so nonprofit vote, Alliance for Justice. All of these groups, the Center for Secure and Modern Elections is the group that's been uh, putting in automatic voter registration in about 13 states. They have a goal of 25 states by 2020. <coughs> Alliance for Youth used to be Bus Federation. They're going to help regarding the youth in the API group. And API data, last but not least, which is Karthik. He's my token academic. <laughs> <laughs> and digital network, we did that too. We support Rock the Boat for the future. We have a partnership with NBC Asian America, the only vertical digital platform in the country that's dedicated to Asian American news. And for all of you, we have we have been working on a, a six-hour Asian documentary with PBS the Washington, D.C. office beat up, and we hope that it will be ready for launch and screening, that you will invite your funders, your elected officers, your uh, everybody in the community uh, for May 2020. That is scheduled for May 2020. That will give you something really super special to, uh, to invite all the people in, around the community. And that is actually Richard Louie. He has three projects. One is caregivers. He wanted to make sure that ages would be included in a caregiver uh, documentary. He's running around, asked by the State Department to talk about freedom of the press in other countries. So, so we support that. And then citizenship. 
at this point right now, I think uh, the Kofi Foundation is actually the biggest funder for citizenship in the country. We started with New Americans campaign and focused on the Asian community. And then uh, we went to Utah and we met with him and he should be speaking later. And we were so impressed, in a way sad, that there were so many Latinos there and other immigrants. And because it's a red state, people don't go invest in it. People on the progressive side. And we thought, you know, immigrants can't help where they live and where they make a living. And therefore, uh, Coach just started a brand new partnership called Cities for Citizenship, which is geared off a city bank investment. And our goal is actually red cities and red states to help those people become citizens as well. And then we have the National Immigration Conference. For those of you, for one of the things you should attend, this is the biggest and only conference regarding immigrants in the country. It is in December, starts December 9th or 10th in Northern Virginia. And it is really fantastic. I have to say that in 2014, I would think that the bulk of the attendees were in fact focused on Latino issues. So what did we have to do? We had to fund it to become a diamond sponsor so that it could also focus on Asian issues. And now it's really diverse. It's got African issues and Asian, Latino, and so forth. So we're kind of proud of that partnership. So that's the Culture Foundation's investment. And um, like I said, I'm delighted that all of you are in the room, all of you venture capitalist investors, and, and all your very successful ladies and gentlemen. We need you. We hope to work with you. And thank you very much for coming today.